So that's how the men got killed around the corner there. They never did find them cops, by the way. In fact, nobody even went after them. But I may add a footnote to that, that one of the most gigantic parades or demonstrations, I should say, that ever took place in the history of San Francisco took place a few days after that when they marched up Market Street. Every man was dressed in the same type of uniform, a white cap, a hickory shirt, and black jeans. That was our dress code, you know? And they marched up, never saying a word to each other, saw their heads semi-bowed. But before that, they had sent a delegation up to see both the chief of police and the mayor. And they told him, we don't want to see one cop from the time we leave the ferry building to the time we get where we're going. We don't want to see one cop at all. Now, you remember that. And every single policeman in San Francisco was kept away from the demonstration. We had our own police, we put an armband on, kept our own order, and that's the way it went. And we had something like two big truckloads of flowers from all different organizations, from the shopkeepers along the front, buying flowers to give to the uh, strikers as a symbolic gesture of unity and solidarity. And that was a parade that we have never seen again. It was so, so meaningful. And uh, thousands lined up Market Street to see what had happened. And they all took their hat off and head down and paid their respects. So like I say, from every action there's a reaction. And if they thought the reaction was gonna be that the striker, just because they shot a couple down, was gonna go rushing back to work, they miscalculated. Because right after that, they brought out the railroad workers running the railroad tracks, uh, running the boxcars up and down. They said, we had enough of this. And they came out on strike and left the, so now we had nothing, nothing running up and down. So that was the reaction to that. Did that lead to the general strike? Right after the, immediately after the killing, the people of San Francisco said, we've seen enough. We've had enough. We're tired of the beatings, men trying to fight for a little increase in wages, take care of their families. And this is what happened. General strike, general strike, and the word went out. And by God, within two, three days, it was a general strike. But before that, even before the general strike, shopkeepers along the front were closing their shop up, saying, we're closed until the end of the strike in support of the strikers. I mean, they weren't waiting for the AFLs to make up their minds, which they had a long time, long time to make up their minds. They could have done this weeks before, but uh, they didn't. But it took the, took the killing of the two men to really force the issue. And when it happened, everything shut down. And you couldn't, you couldn't, not only couldn't get a taxi, but you couldn't even buy a gallon of gasoline on the waterfront there or any place else in San Francisco unless you had a permit from the strike committee. The only people who got gasoline was doctors, people like that, or some special emergency, and they got a special slip for it. Well, I, I'd just like to say that uh I appreciate that the fight that happened here, and I think in San Francisco, we do have a really good city. It has its faults, but a lot of the reasons why it is a good place to live is because of this battle, this history that people shouldn't forget. I'm in a union. I get. I have a good, you know, health plan. I've got all these things, and I wouldn't have had any of that if you guys hadn't put yourself on the line in 1934, and thank you. That's the way we feel, that somebody in our way of life put themselves on the line. And I always think of the woman up in Massachusetts and that part of the country who came out in the middle of winter time protesting the 12-hour day in the jute mills that they worked in, and he said, we want a union, and we don't want want a union that's going to abuse us. We want a good, clean, legitimate, honest union to take care of our needs. And they came out in four feet of snow and marched along picket lines. Cops came in and clubbed them and beat them and so on. So if we think about conditions and the things we got today, we have to always think that 
I'll always remember that years ago, somebody else came along and they got their head battered in. And this is the way our life is going to be. And if we don't do it now, if we don't hang together, stick in there together, we're going to go back to conditions that are going to be worse than that they fought to get out of. And that's why I say, hang in there, let's give it our best shot, because we're going to make it better, not for our children only, but for the children's children, the children's children, and so on. And maybe one day we may have a damn good, peaceful, wonderful world to live in. The strike itself brought on new type of leadership, guys like Harry Bridges, who remained one of the poorest paid labor leaders for, for a union in the country. I don't think the man owned two suits of clothes. That's the type of guy he was, you know? Never insisted upon big wage increases all the time for himself, like others do. If he'd go to a town to attend a convention or whatever it was, it'd always be a sort of a cheap hotel, never mind these big swanky places. That's the type of human being he was. And that's the type of man you had confidence in. Guys like Jerry Bulky, solid character guys. Henry Schmidt, all gone now, all these men have passed on. But uh, it was quite a, quite, a, quite a deal. And it was after, I may add, that while we won the strike there because it went to arbitration, and the arbitrator ruled that these men had good, a good beef. And it ended up where never again will we see the day when men would be chosen for a job standing in the middle of the street, called in like you would some dog or something like that. They gave us our own union hall or gave us the right to have our own union hall after where we could choose our men on a, on a system of fairness. And I may add here that if you and I was to register on a Monday for a job and you registered ahead of me, that your name would be called out ahead of me and you would get the first job out and I would get the second one. That's the way we wanted it to work. And it worked that way and it has worked that way ever since. Now, the idea of confidence in each other, faith, is very, very important among working people. If we lose that, we have nothing. We got nothing to go by. It's just the idea that you and I have something in common, and the common thing we have is the fact that we're all working for a living. And when we're hungry, we all suffer the same thing. And we all got families to, that we have to pay attention to. And therefore, our job is to get the best we can from the work we do. And the only way we're going to get that is by belonging to a union. Now here, I gave you conditions what it was before we had a union. It was like a dog, nothing. We stumped on each other, abused each other, uh, told lies about each other in order to get a job. So here you're looking at men that we have a, a revere, men who gave their attention, their respect uh, over the years to bring it on these good conditions. And they're gone now. And we don't want to forget them. We don't intend to forget them. And that's why you see the names on these plats here, uh, because they made sacrifices in their time to bring about these conditions. Now, there are some people, of course, who will insist about unions never did any good. We don't need unions. They're a waste of time. Then you just try it. Without, you try working someplace without a union, and you'll find a boss saying, you're not working fast enough. We need more, more production, more production. Or you're getting paid too much. Or the hell with you and your medical care. We're not interested in your family's medical uh, support, so on and so forth. But it was the union 